Hello everyone, and welcome to lecture two. What is inheritance? Now, inheritance is an interesting and slightly more difficult topic. That's why I ultimately decided to put it in the advanced course and not the fundamentals course. Sometimes the usefulness of inheritance is argued, and it does become slightly more difficult to understand when to use inheritance versus things like interfaces or composition. And we'll discuss both inheritance and interfaces in this course. Now, to me, inheritance is about two things. First, it's about code reuse, and second, it's about polymorphism. Now, in regards to code reuse, you can actually accomplish that in many different ways using inheritance, interfaces, or composition. But inheritance at times does make code reuse slightly more simplified and slightly more easy to do. So let's go ahead and get started with code reuse. We'll talk about polymorphism in the next lecture and also in the virtual and override methods lecture as well. All right, so inheritance is really just the idea of creating classes that derive from other classes. And the goal is to have those derived classes inherit the characteristics of the base class. So let's go ahead and create some classes to see how this works. So we'll start by building a new class. We'll create our famous person class back from the fundamentals track. So we'll say person. And just like before, our person has some basic properties, things like a name, right? All people have names. Um, our person maybe also has an age. So we'll say public int age. Now, there are many type of people in the world, and we'll start off with creating another type of person, but this time it's going to be a more specific uh, person, and that's going to be an employee. So let's create another class, this time calling it employee. Now, the syntax for inheritance is just a colon. So we have class employee, and then I'll say colon, Person. What this means is, is that employee now derives from person. Or you can say an employee is a person. That keyword is a is very important, so don't forget it. With inheritance, you should be always allowed to say the derived class is a version of the base class. So employee is a person and that makes sense even in the real world. Now, in our employee, we can add some employee-specific characteristics, and we'll start off simple. We'll add a string called ID. We'll say that an employee has some type of identification. Now, what this really allows me to do, what inheritance is doing is, if I go back to program.cs and I create an employee, so we'll say employee E equals new employee. And if I do E dot and look at the IntelliSense, look what's going on. The employee not only has an ID, but it also has a name and an age. The reason why it has a name and age is because an employee is a person. So everything a person has, so does an employee. Now, this also is going to apply inside the derived class, which is employee. For example, I can access the public properties of the person because employee, once again, is a person. So if I made a method, let's say, public um, void introduce self, let's say employees can introduce themselves to maybe other employees, I want to do a simple console message, and I'll say, I don't know, hello, my name is, and I'll plug in my name. Notice how it's saying, or IntelliSense is telling me that I can use a name even though no name is defined here. That's once again because it's coming from person. And I'll say, and my ID is, and I'll plug in ID, something like that. 
By the way, you can also use your C sharp six features. If you don't want to use string concatenation, you could also rewrite this using string interpolation. So that is done by using the dollar sign. And instead of ever closing the quotes, you would instead just write it like this. This is a little bit more clean and elegant. So either of these are valid. I'll leave the newer one just so that we get some practice with using it. Okay, so now let's go back to program.cs and let's actually give our employee some information. So we'll say e.name equals jesse, e.age, um, we'll say 30, and we'll say e.id equals some type of identification string. Doesn't really matter. And then I'll finally just say e dot introduce self and I'll run this application. And as you can see, it says, hello, my name is Jesse. So it's pulling out this Jesse property from the base class and my ID is blank. Now I told you that this is really all about code reuse, but what does that really mean? And what it means is this in your code, what if I had, you know, a person, what if I had an employee, a salaried employee, maybe an hourly employee, or all these different types of people in the world. If I didn't have the base class person, I would have to define name and age in each class. So that means every single class that is a person would have this inside of it. And you're duplicating all of this code but there's no need to do that. We can write it one time and then have that be used in all the derived classes. That's the first aspect of the code reuse. The second aspect we'll see more in the next lecture, which is having existing code be able to kind of reuse your new classes that derive from base classes. And we'll get to that, like I said, in the next lecture.